Electric cars are making headlines this week with the federal government promising 50,000 new charging ports around the country, predicting a third of cars sold by 2030 will be electric or hybrid. Trent Nikolic is the managing editor at drive.com.au. Trent, what kind of demand are you seeing for electric vehicles here? Well, the demand's picking up slowly, Angela. People in Australia are interested in them. Not in massive numbers, though, yet. Uh, you know, in a market of a million cars, the sales are still making up less than 1%. So it's safe to say that Australians are probably cautiously optimistic at this point. So what do you think needs to happen for more buy-in? I think the first thing that needs to happen, Angela, is that the price needs to come down. Uh, Australians are pretty savvy when it comes to buying cars. And, yes... We do buy a lot of expensive cars in Australia and we do tend towards the more expensive variants of cars, but Australians won't necessarily pay a premium just because the vehicle is electric. So I think the price needs to come down. That would be the first thing. And then beyond that, you mentioned the 50,000 charging ports. I think charging infrastructure and public charging infrastructure needs to be more broadly available. Mm. So you were talking about the cost. What does an electric vehicle cost compared with a similar model on regular fuel? OK, so the most affordable electric vehicle in Australia right now is the MG ZS EV. That's 44990 44 drive away, I should say. Um, it's difficult to compare a regular car to an electric car because you're not necessarily comparing apples with apples. But if you look at Hyundai, uh, a regular i30 sedan starts in the mid-20s and their Ionic full electric vehicle, which is a sedan as well, a small sedan, starts in the mid-50s. So there's a fair price premium there. Yeah, that's a huge difference. What do you think the best models are that are available here in Australia right now? We've test-driven some really impressive stuff in the last few months, one of which is, is on screen now. It's the um, Hyundai Ioniq 5. That is a particularly impressive vehicle. Uh, we've got a review coming up on the website later tonight for the new Polestar 2, so you can see our thoughts on that tomorrow. That, that's another one that promises to make a real impact in the market. And then, of course, there's the perennial favourite, and the one that gets a lot of the publicity is the Tesla Model 3. It's hard to argue that around that $60,000 mark to start with, that that's not good value for money for that car. So would you go electric? Do you think it's worth it? Uh, look, I think I say to people all the time, if you can afford it and if you can justify driving an electric vehicle, then absolutely look at it. I would love to have one for me as a second car. I tend to travel longer distances more regularly than some people do. So for me, I couldn't rely on just having an electric vehicle as one vehicle. But I think if you're a two-car family, if you've got the budget there, I think an electric vehicle makes a lot of sense because being able to charge it at home, uh, being able to do something for the environment and make a bit of a difference, I think is important. You talked about bringing those costs down. Federal government obviously talking up a big game, but is there something more that they can be doing to make them cheaper? Well, I think if you look, Angela, at markets around the world where take-up of electric vehicles is really, really high, somewhere like Norway, government incentives are very, very prominent there. So I think our government needs to ask itself the question, if it is serious about encouraging Australians to buy electric cars in large numbers, it needs to do more than it's currently doing. And I think incentivising people to buy them, whether it's through cheaper registration or whether it's through being able to charge them for free or even subsidising the initial purchase price, I think that will encourage Australians to look at them. Indeed. OK, thanks so much. Trent Nicolich.